How many of you know what this says? Wow, that's a lot of you. I have not had this many people in other services. Adria, what is this? Yeah, it's a rainbow. It's a rainbow moon band. You're right. It's a bracelet maker. So, no, sorry, Dan. But this, back when I was in middle school, this used to be my absolute favorite thing. See, if you don't know what this is, it's a bracelet maker. You have these little rubber bands, and you put them along like the little, like the little pegs in like different orders, and then you like loop them over each other, and somehow when you just pull it off, like a bracelet's just magically made, and I don't really get it, but for some reason it works. And see, so when I was in fifth grade, this was the coolest thing ever. See, every, I know, right? See, everybody had that. I even had this bag, and in this bag, I had this thing, I had like the little hook that you need to make them, and I had a shoebox that was filled with different color organized rubber bands. And this bag that I had, I brought it everywhere with me. I brought it to school every day, and I'd go to school and I'd make them on the bus in the morning, and then I'd make them at lunch, and then I'd make them at recess, and then I'd make them on the bus home, and then I'd get home and I'd make even more. Like, I was drowning in rainbow loom bracelets because all I ever did was make them. See, I was a little bit obsessed with this. But so was everybody else. See, rainbow loom, when I was in middle school, it was trending. It was the thing that everybody did. I wasn't the weird kid because I carried around a bag full of them or made them all the time or wore them on my wrist. See, everybody kind of did it. But now when I ask a room full of people if they know what it is, I get like maybe a fourth of the room who's like, yeah, I know what that is. And some people who are like, maybe, kind of, I don't really know what you're talking about. It's not as popular anymore. See, it's no longer trending. When something is trending, it has a ton of value. But as soon as that trend dies down, it's suddenly not that valuable or important to people anymore. And just like we look at the Rainbow Loom Band, or maybe it's a trending video game that's no longer trending, sometimes we treat ourselves like we treat these video games or toys that are trending. There's times when they get really popular and really trending, and there's times when there's not so much. Maybe you just scored the winning basket at your basketball game, and the whole school saw it, and everyone loves you for it. Maybe you just won your swim race, and you bring in your team to championships. Maybe you just got the lead in the school play and your name is on posters hanging all around the school and city telling everybody that you're going to be the lead in that play. All of a sudden, maybe you have a ton more people sitting with you at lunch and everyone wants to be your friends. Maybe you're getting more likes on social media. All these different things start happening when we start getting more popular or more trending. And when we're really popular or trending, we don't realize that we're basing our value on what other people are thinking of us. We're basing our value on what people say we are good at. We're basing our value off the accomplishments and off the positive attention that we're getting from other people. I think we start to realize this when these positive comments and positive attention turns to negative comments and negative attention. Maybe it's your friends start being mean to you. Maybe you get a really bad grade on a paper and everybody knows it. Maybe you don't feel like you have any friends at all, or maybe you missed that basket that could have won your team the game. All these things happen and suddenly we feel like our value goes down. See, because we base our value on what other people think of us, when these things happen, we let that determine our value. But let me tell you, something you probably all know is that there's mean people in this world. And we're imperfect and we're going to mess up. We're now we're going to make every single basket. We're never going to do everything right, and neither is everybody else. And because of that, people are going to be mean, and our value has a tendency to drop if we let them dictate it. See, when we're basing our value on other people, we're never going to feel like we're enough, and we're never going to feel like we have a constant value. See, it's going to go up one day and down the other based on how other people choose to treat you. See, we can't continue to believe that the only way to feel valuable is from positive attention from other people. In this series, we've been looking at the most vital or the most important things when it comes to our relationship with God. And I think knowing what God says about us and knowing that God determines our value is one of those super vital or important things. So today, we're going to be looking at a book of Luke, 
the book called Luke, in the New Testament. You see, Luke was a person who walked the earth back with Jesus. And Luke decided that he was going to write practically a book or a story of the accounts of Jesus' life, so everything that happened. And that writing of that book is now known as the book of Luke in the New Testament that we're going to be looking at today. So in this book, there's a time when Jesus is talking to a ton of really important people, just important leaders and people in this community. And they ask him, why are you hanging out with people like sinners and tax collectors? People who have practically no value. See, Jesus had a habit of hanging out and talking to these people that the community considered almost dirty or outcast. They didn't want to talk to them. They didn't want to be around them. But you see, Jesus decided he was going to talk to them and love on them anyways. And that shocked these people. So they asked them, like, why is this? And Jesus responded with a story to explain this. In Luke 15, 4 through 6, it says, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. See, this story is an example that Jesus is giving us of how our value is to him. So let's break this down a little bit. There's a shepherd, so someone who takes care of sheep. And he has 99, no, sorry, he has 100 sheep. And then one of the sheep decides to wander away. So now he has 99 sheep. And then one sheep decides he's going to walk away and wander away from the shepherd and away from the crowd and just go off on his own. But you see, that shepherd could have stayed with the 99 sheep and said, well, I've got 99 perfectly fine sheep. It's okay. I'm going to let the one go away. But instead, the shepherd, too, decides to stay there, but he decides to go after this one lost sheep to go and chase him out and to go and find him. And then Jesus continues on and says, once he found this lost sheep, he picks the sheep up, he puts it on his shoulders, and he joyfully carries him back home, back to the rest of the sheep. And it says that when he got home, he called together people from his community and said, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. See, he loved the sheep enough that he left the 99, chased him out, found him, brought him back, and then celebrated his return. See, and then Jesus goes on in this story, in the next verse, to explain how this kind of ties into our life. It says in, in Luke 15, 7, it says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. See, Jesus is saying that he, Jesus, is the shepherd. And we are the sheep. Jesus is saying that when there's, so all of his followers are kind of like all of his sheep, and he's the shepherd. And he's saying that when one of us decides that we're going to turn our backs and walk away, when one of us decides that we're going to say bye to this whole God thing and go that way, or when one of us doesn't know God at all and is all the way over there, or if we mess up and feel like we have no value anymore and we decide to leave, Jesus is saying that, no, I'm going to continue to follow you. Just like the shepherd chased after his sheep, Jesus says that he's going to chase after us. He's going to walk with us, not leave us, and continue to pursue us until we're ready to come back home. And then Jesus is going to celebrate our return. It says that he's going to rejoice over the one sinner who repents. When we finally come home to Jesus, he's going to celebrate the fact that we came home. See, one person is just as valuable to God as the sheep was to the shepherd. And even when you mess up and you run away and you don't know what your value is, you still have value. We still have value in God's eyes. We have so much value that God is willing to chase after us, willing to come and find us, willing to pursue us every single time we go away, no matter what. In God's eyes, we're never that toy or that video game we talked about that's not trending or became unpopular. In God's eyes, we are always popular, we are always trending, and we are always valuable. We never lose our value like my rainbow loop bands might have lost their value. See, God created you. God is your father, your dad. And as your creator, your father, he has the right to determine your value. And if he tells you that you're valuable, you should listen to that, because it matters. No matter if you screw up or if you run away or all, if people say that you don't have value, God never changes. God's never up and down with how much he cares about us. It's always the same. 
See, God even shows us how much value we are to him when he sent his son down to die on the cross. To forgive us for our sins, like, he mean that, like, you are valuable enough to die for in God's eyes. Like, that right there is saying something. If God determines your value, value and you're worth dying for, that's really cool. This series, we've been talking about a few things, like loving God and loving others, and how these are really, really important things. But you see, you can't fully love God and you can't fully love others if you don't first see the value that God says about you. If you first don't see how important, how precious you are to Him. See, finding your value in God is so important. So I have two things I want you to kind of think through or talk about in your discussion groups later to help you remember to base your value off of what God thinks. The first thing is I want you to know what God says about you. I want you to know that God says you are flawless. That God says you are his child, that you're forgiven, that you're valuable, and so much more. God calls you his son, calls you his son or his daughter. That's really cool. The second thing I want you to know is I want you to know why what God thinks and God says it matters. See, we just kind of said it earlier, but God is your creator. He put you here. God is your father, and as your creator and your father, like that matters what he thinks about you. And if it matters what he thinks about you and he says that you're valuable, then your value needs to start coming from him. As we wrap up today, I want you all to remember to walk away from this, walk away from today confident that your value is from God and that he says you're really valuable. I want you to take this to your schools and home and just really live a life of saying, I don't care what these people think about me anymore. I don't care if they say I'm not valuable or if I aren't perfect because none of us are perfect. But God says that I have enough value and my value should come from him. Will you guys pray with me? Hey God, I thank you so much for each and every student you brought here today. I pray that just as they go about their weeks and as they go home and as they go into their schools, that they can remember that you determine their value, God. You tell them how important and how loved they are, and their value is so high in you, God. I pray that they can forget what other people say about them and forget what other people tell them that they're not worth it or when they tell themselves that they aren't worth it, God. I pray that you just walk with them every single day, reminding them of how important and how cared for and wanted and loved they are. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Hey guys, so we're going to worship one more time, so I invite you to stand up and come to the stage. And, and it's funny, as Morgan was talking, I was just 